Welcome to my first video posting about discrete mathematics. I thought a nice place to start with discrete mathematics is binomial coefficients, and they are contained inside of Pascal's triangle. If you've never seen Pascal's triangle before, then why don't you click here to check out my other channel where I give you five reasons why Pascal's triangle is really cool. In this video, what I'm going to do is prove to you why these numbers, n choose k, turn up to be the coefficients in the expansion of a plus b to the power of n. It uses a combinatorial proof, and we're going to explain how. If you've taken some high school math, you've probably seen the following. a plus b all squared is equal to a plus b times a plus b. And if you work it out, you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and you may have even memorized this as a fact. But have you ever thought about it more generally than this? What if you take a plus b to the power of 1? Well, that's just a plus b. It's a little bit boring, but you could keep going. You could say, what about a plus b to the power of 0? Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Now let's start getting bigger. So let's say a plus b to the power of 3. If you write out a plus b three times and multiply it all together, you'll find that you get a to the power of 3 plus 3 times a squared b plus 3 times a b squared plus b cubed. Now if you stop for a moment and look at the coefficients here, you'll see here we have a coefficient of 1, here we have a coefficient of 1 and 1, so let's start writing these down. First I had a 1, and then I get another 1 and a 1, and then in the next expansion I get a 1 and a 2 and a 1, and then next I get 1, 3, 3, 1. And this is building up Pascal's triangle. You may find this interesting, or you may have even heard of this before and you've just memorized it as a fact, that you can find the coefficients for these type of expansions in Pascal's triangle. In this video, I'm going to prove to you why that's the case. The fact we're going to prove is that a plus b to the power of n is equal to the summation from k equals 0 to n, where we're taking terms n choose k times a to the n minus k times b to the k and this is for any integer n bigger than or equal to zero. In case you're a little bit unfamiliar with summation notation, this is equal to, let's think about what happens when k equals zero. You get n choose zero, and then a power of a to the n, and b is to the power of zero, so we don't need to write it, plus n choose one times a to the power of n minus one times b, and we keep going until we get to n choose n, and now a will be to the power of zero, so we just have b to the power of n. If you've heard me talking about n choose k before, you've heard me refer to it as a binomial coefficient, especially when I talk about Pascal's triangle. The reason why it's called a binomial coefficient is because they occur here as the coefficients in this expansion of this binomial expression. You may be interested to know that there is indeed a generalization to multinomial coefficients, but for this video I'm just going to focus on why n choose k is this binomial coefficient. So before going through the proof, let's just make sure that our little examples up here do make sense in terms of what we've written down down here. Let's take a look at a plus b to the power of 3. If we look at what we ended up with, we have a to the power of 3 with a coefficient of 1. The coefficient of 1 is like 3 choose 0. There is one way to select 0 things from a collection of 3 things, so that's how you get this coefficient of 1. The next coefficient should be 3 choose 1, and indeed that equals 3 and we can see that the power of a has decreased one by 1 and the power of b has increased by 1. Similarly, the next coefficient is 3 because that's 3 choose 2, and again the power of a has decreased and the power of b has increased. And our final term has a b to the power of 3 with a coefficient of 1, and that's like 3 choose 3. So before working through the proof, make sure you've convinced yourself that this fact does hold for these small cases. So here's the proof. Let's start by writing out what a plus b to the power of n means. It means take a plus b times a plus b times a plus b and keep going until you've done that n times. So I'm going to call this first one the first piece, and this second one the second piece, the third piece, and then up to the nth piece. Now let's think carefully about how we would expand this out to get the full product. As a quick reminder, let's just scroll back up to our little example on, let's say, n equals 2. So right here at the top. When we have a plus b times a plus b and we expand this out, we have to look at all the different combinations that could happen. So we look at here, we have a times a and that's what gives us this a squared. So we've selected the a and we've selected the a. 
Here we've selected the A from the first piece, and here we've selected the A from the second piece. The next thing we could do is to multiply this A by this B. So here we would have selected an A and a B, and that gives us one of these terms AB, which happens again when we select the B and the A, so that happens again, and that gives us this two right here. And finally, we could have selected the B from the first piece and the B from the second piece, and that gives us this term right here. So what we've learned from looking at this is that in each of the pieces, we can select either the A or the B to end up in the final product. So what we've learned is that to form a term in the final product, we will have selected either an A or B from each of the N pieces. This means that a general term will look like some coefficient, I'll just write coefficient for now, times a to some power, let's call it i, times b to some power, let's call it k. We must have i plus k equal to n since there are n pieces in the product. This means that we're going to have our coefficient times a to the power n minus k times b to the power of k. To form a term in the final expansion that has b to the power of k, we must have selected b from k of the n pieces. And there are n choose k possible ways to do this. We must also have selected a from the other n minus k pieces. And how many ways are there to do that? n minus k choose n minus k, which equals 1. Therefore, our coefficient is equal to n choose k. And this completes our proof. So to recap, we know that a generic term will look like a coefficient, which we now know to be n choose k, times a to the power of n minus k times b to the k. And that's a generic term, and we have to look at all the possible terms that we would have gotten and sum them all up. And that's how we get this expansion right here. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe. See you next time.